Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I want to show you how you can program NanoLeaf devices using the integrated API provided by NanoLeaf. NanoLeaf is a consumer electronics company specializing in smart home LED lighting. They provide modular smart lighting panels that allow you to create customizable designs and patterns on the wall. These panels can be controlled with NanoLeaf smartphone app or other supported systems. If you want to programmatically control NanoLeaf lights without using apps, for example if you want to integrate them into your custom smart home system, you can utilize the NanoLeaf API. In this video I will show you how to do just that using a NanoLeaf Shapes Hexagon device. The first thing you have to do is to initially set up the device by using the official NanoLeaf app. Once the device is set up, it becomes available on your local home network via Wi-Fi and it's possible to control the device using the official NanoLeaf app. Now, in the next step, you need to find the IP address for your device within your local network. There are specific methods to do this, but the easiest way is to locate it in the connected devices list through the user interface of your Wi-Fi router. Once you have found the IP address, you can use a computer that is connected to the same local network. Open a web browser and then enter the IP address. You should be greeted with a simple page displaying NanoLeaf and showing you some technical details. To control this device programmatically, we first need to register a new user to the device. By registering a user, we will receive a token that must be included in every request to the API. Once we have obtained that token, we can control the device using HTTP requests to the API endpoint of the device. The base URL of the endpoint is typically set up as follows. HTTP as the protocol, followed by the IP address of the device, the port, which is 16021, and the base path, which is API slash v1. The exact URL may vary from device to device, so it's advisable to check the official documentation. In order to prepare and execute HTTP requests easily, I will be using the API platform testing tool Postman. However, any other HTTP testing tool will work as well. Now, to register the user you have to do the following steps. First, you have to press the on-off button on the controller of the NanoLeaf device for about 5 to 7 seconds until the device LEDs start flashing. Once they are flashing, you have about 30 seconds to perform a POST request to the device's API endpoint NEW. If timed correctly, the request will return a token in the response. With this token, you can now make further requests to the API to control the device. One useful action is to retrieve device information. Make a GET request to this endpoint, including your earlier obtained token in the URL path. By this, you will receive details about the device, such as installed effects or the panel layout. If you want to check whether the device is currently on or off, you can call this endpoint. It will return the value true if the light is on or false if it's off. You can check the brightness level by using the brightness endpoint. It will return the current brightness as a percentage along with the maximum and minimum brightness values. Calling the endpoint for effects will return a list of available effects for the device with the currently active effect highlighted. If you wish to alter the state of the device, you can make a PUT request to the state endpoint, providing a body that includes instructions on how to modify the device state. For instance, sending the state on with the value TRUE will turn the device on. You can adjust the brightness by updating the brightness state with a new value in a similar way. To change the effect, you can use the effects endpoint with a PUT request, supplying a body that includes a value for the SELECT state. Here you can set the name of the effect saved on the device. These are just a few common use cases for controlling the device. If you are interested in more details, you can refer to the NanoLeaf Open API reference. That's all for today, see you in the next video.